Hey, what's going on guys? DJS here, bringing you guys this week's Collective Kicks Weekly Recap, and it is Friday the 13th of June. Can you believe it's Friday the 13th, and can you believe it's June? I still am kind of having problems with that. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, jump in Weekly Recap. About six pages of stuff, lots of stories. I'm going to browse through some of them uh, pretty quickly and then focus on some other ones that uh, deserve a little bit more attention. The biggest one is the higher quality retros in 2015, which I'll touch uh, when we reach it, probably at the end of the video. Uh, so if you guys are waiting for that, um, try to fast forward to the end. But let's go ahead and jump in. Um, Father's Day Air Jordan 12s baseball cleats customs by Recon. Actually, um, I was talking to the, to the creator of these, and I might be doing like some sort of a collaboration with him in the future. Um, he's doing these uh, customs for Jordan brand, actually, athletes. And uh, the dude is local to, to Oregon and uh, kind of a friend of a friend sort of thing. So look forward to some, uh, some stuff, maybe some video footage of uh, his customs in the future. Uh, if that's something that's of interest to you guys, leave some comments. But he did a pretty dope uh, custom here of these uh, AJ-12 cleats, and you can see it has the gamma treatment on those. Uh, very nice. Uh, not leather, or It's leather, not uh, the suede or whatever the material was on the other ones. But still, very cool uh, custom, and uh, definitely he has a, a lot of really cool stuff that he does on uh, his Instagram. So check his Instagram on that if you guys are interested. Um, we have some uh, what the KD and what the LeBron... Um, shirts that are going to be matching the footwear. I believe the KD is going to drop today or tomorrow. It says today, but I haven't heard anything about it officially. But you know that the, the uh, shoes drop tomorrow. The LeBrons, we still don't know when the LeBron 11, um, what the LeBrons are dropping. Unfortunately, I really um, am anxious to see, and I'm, I'm anxious to try to get a pair. Uh, obviously, you guys already know I'm a fan of the 11, so it would be fitting uh, for myself to be able to get those, but I know everybody wants them. It's kind of the most hyped up LeBron 11 ever, especially after the lackluster appearance of the uh, the 2K14 LeBrons, unfortunately. Uh, but it is what it is. Anyway, uh, introducing the 2014 Lunar Glide 6. Uh, good timing on that because I just did a Lunar Glide versus Boost uh, video, so now I'm gonna have to check out these Lunar Glide sixes and give them maybe a review. Uh, and just kind of go from there, but uh, they look really nice. Like it looks like they changed things up a little bit, uh, and I definitely want to see more about it. If you want to read more about it and see more images, click the article, and you can click uh, the link in the description to go dire directly to the website cl collectivekicks.com. Sorry, uh, and I do appreciate the uh, support. It looks like we got some changes coming on uh, previous posts for the previous months. That's kind of cool. Um, they're doing some more updates to this uh, this website as we talk. So. Um, obviously, we have this popular post section now. It looks like we have previous posts from the previous months that you can click on, which is awesome. I really think that's great, and you can do a calendar view uh, for the previous year. So that's really awesome that they did that. I'm looking forward to seeing the new things that we bring onto the website. Um, rumor 2015 releases. This is straight rumored. Uh, I've, I could probably check with my sources and see uh, how true some of these things are. Obviously, a lot of these ones we already know about. Um, why would they bring back the Thunder 4s again? I have no idea. That doesn't make any sense at all. So, uh, anyway, uh, and why would they bring so many 4s out in the 2000? It's, there should be a lot more 7s. So, I, I don't know. I'm not calling anybody out on this yet. Um, I might run this by my sources. But just so you guys know, just because something comes up in Jordan Brand News doesn't mean I run by everything. Or I run, um, by my sources for everything. Uh, I, it's just kind of like an annoying thing for me to have to do that for them. Um, and for me, so some sometimes if I'm really really interested in something, I'll reach out. Other times I'll just go with the stories that other people are kind of posting, and uh, and see, you know, just give my little twist. This was written by uh, another writer though, as you guys can see. But um, anyway, we'll find out about that. I guess I'll look into that. I, I have a feeling. Um, obviously, there's a ton more releases that are happening that we don't know about, and I know about a couple of them that I can't say anything about. But um, but it is the year of the seven um, next year, so keep that in mind. Anyway, moving forward, we have some more um, information about some uh, Instapump Shack Attack uh, 4 retros. And then Kicks Reason wrote a ton of articles lately. I do appreciate uh, all of the articles from the writers that we have. Um, you can see also the highs and lows for the Instapumps. Um, another story on that. And then Evan Hellas did a little blog on the Nike Tennis 2014 Wimbledon. Uh, pack it looks like right there. There's about three different sneakers as you can see. Uh, also, there was another colorway of the KD7 that was leaked, um, and so this one looks more along the lines of like a, um, a non-GS size of the KD. So we'll see more and more. I have a feeling those uh, KD7s are going to be growing on people as the year goes on. Same as what the sixes did. 
last year. I mean, the six elites to me uh, are are really really nice, especially the last one I did a review on, um, and you guys will see that in, I think in this feed as well. Um, Kicks Reason did another Throwback Thursday episode as well, and I did one um, on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to check out his video, check that out. Uh, and we're moving on. New colorway of Little Penny Posits in the metallic red. Really, really sick colorway in my opinion. Uh, with the red upper and the red metallic red kind of um, bl bl like back plastic, or I guess, met met metal area. I don't even know what it is necessarily, but I guess it's plastic, but it looks um, metallic. Um, also, there's a video review of the Air Jordan um, Chicago colorway, the white and red uh, retro from Kicks Reason, if you want to see his review. Very nice review. And uh, also did a couple other articles on some Omni Light um, and Keith Herring. I'm not even sure who that is. So you guys can check that out if you guys would like. Those look really crazy, actually. Really, really crazy. And then um, Reebok Kamikaze ones. Um, and also some Fila Spaghetti Gray and Whites. So there's lots of uh, information on a lot of the other brands out there for Reebok and Fila from Kicks Reason. Also, Adidas has a SL Loop Runner that we get a first look at. Price point seventy five bucks. I'm going to say uh, probably in line with the Roshi Run uh, with the pricing that it has. But I like the clever lacing system. As you pull up the straps, uh, sides or whatever, to the laces, it, it exposes the uh, three stripes for Adidas. And I think that's clever. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, more to come on that, I'm sure. So the Black Sheep Nike SB uh, dunk was canceled. And the reason why it was canceled is supposedly because of the Gucci print, similar Gucci print of the dunk SBs. And because of that, they had to pull these off his shelves uh, before the actual official release. So this is a point uh, that I wanted to discuss. And it's kind of crazy because uh, Nike SBs have had this really crazy release date schedule. You guys have noticed this from, the, uh, I mentioned this in the past, from the, the Bao Haas or the Chairman Bao um, Nike Dunk SBs. Some stores were selling them two weeks before other stores. Like some three, three weeks before they were released online. Like the fact that there's such a huge range and, and it seems like... The skate shops independently have free reign to do whatever the hell they want with their Nike SBs. Um, maybe they're going to have some sort of, of of regular cadence happening going forward where you have the release dates again like you used to. You have the just everything the way it used to be. It doesn't make any sense to me to have seven different release dates for the sneakers. And, and the main reason why I mention this is because the Nike um, SB Black Sheep collaboration there was tons of tons of uh, models that were already sold because they sold before even Black Sheep was selling the models. Uh, they were selling on their own regular schedule of whatever they wanted to, to release them. So now that they had to be recalled, then all these ones that were sold, they can't recall. So those ones are higher, holding a way higher resale value than the ones uh, or than, than other SBs because they were canceled. And they're going to be a lot more difficult to get your hands on. All the ones that, that were uh, recalled are probably going to be destroyed. And... It is what it is, but it's definitely kind of interesting. It seems like Nike SB needs to get their stuff together, have a regularly uh, released like schedule for the sneakers. Um, it can't be that hard to to figure that out. Also, the other major thing that they need to do is control the price points of the releases. I'm sick of seeing skate shops charging 250 for a Jordan one collaboration just because they can um it's a retailer not a resale environment as a retailer you don't charge resale prices and this is just my two cents on how this is going down or how it should be going down you shouldn't have to kick flip for a nike dunk sb just because you want an sb i don't skateboard i do not skateboard i wish i could skateboard if i was little again and i had the opportunity um i mean i tried to skateboard when i was a kid i wasn't very good at it but i still loved skateboarding. I still loved playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater and and having a pair of skate shoes is fun. I don't have to be a skater to to appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So like I just think it's kind of ridiculous the things that skate shops are doing nowadays. They have this kind of ego tripping sort of thing that they're they're doing and back in the day they didn't have that and it, at least in my opinion they didn't have that. I mean they upcharged a little bit for um the the sneakers but like I think my Tiffany Dunks were like 150 box prices like 65. Like uh, it's it's just kind of crazy that they can get away with a lot of that. That would be just like Foot Locker selling you like the championship pack Jordan retros this weekend for three hundred and fifty dollars because they can. Also, I did see like Jimmy Jazz or Shoe Palace or one of those places was selling um, the Yeezy phone posits for like three hundred bucks or something, like which was over retail, obviously by fifty dollars. Makes no sense to me at all. It seems like um, that's how people with their accounts. Hopefully, if word gets back to Nike. 
then they get their accounts um, suspended or withdrawn because uh, of them not playing by the rules. And that's, again, my little rant on my feelings of of um, accounts overcharging. And some people are like, well, yeah, if it's a hype shoe, of course they, they should be able to charge more or they can, they can charge more or it justifies it. But it doesn't justify it, in my opinion, because, again, they are the retailer, not the resale chain. If they wanted to be in the reta- resale market, um, that's counterproductive to what uh, what is supposed to happen when you sell a product uh, as a retailer. But anyway, leave some comments. Weigh in on the comment section. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about this little mini rant. And uh, I, you know, I just I feel strongly about that. I think that that they need to have um, something uh, better, a system better in place, or somebody should be monitoring it within Nike. Um, I would do it. Give me the job, Nike. I would do it for you guys. Anyway, we'll uh, move on here. The uh, Nike Air uh, Jordan Future gets two colorways. Was going to release this weekend. Did get pushed back to the 21st, probably because of all the releases this weekend. And you already noticed, or if you didn't notice, Nike has actually separated their time uh, releases uh, a little bit. So it gets hit really hard at 7 a.m. my t- Or I guess not 7. It would be 5 a.m. my time. And then also again at 7 a.m. my time. So there, there's some releases happening at, at 5 a.m., some releases happening at 7 a.m. Uh, so interesting that they're actually changing it up. But it, I'm, I'm assuming it's just too many releases uh, happening on one day. Um, and you already know that they have problems with, with the system crashing. So five shoes at the same time would be mayhem versus two shoes at a time or whatever it might be. Uh, but the futures were, were pushed back. Uh, two of the nicest colorways I think I've seen so far. Um, the iguana colorway and then the black colorway looks very nice. Um, all right, so moving on, we have the Air Jordan 4 remastered for 2015. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to get back uh, to that. But there is a new colorway. There's a whole bunch of stuff uh, being remastered. Um, also, we get a look at the Nike LeBron 11 with the Independence Day kind of colorway there. And uh, moving down. Now, a lot of these I'm just going to skip over because I did a video on the Lunar Lawn versus Adidas Boost and a kind of comparison video. I like the comments you guys left on that. A lot of cool people left some comments. Uh, Jesper Kicks left a comment that was really um, educational, and I do appreciate those people that know the technical side or know of more of the technical side. Um, I'm I'm just a consumer more or less, showing you guys my perspective fr- from uh, my consumer side, not from the technical side. So um, there was a lot of comments. So make sure you read those comments if you see that video. Um, also, we have a video review from uh, Kicks Reason on the Reebok right there, and then also some more Fila information on the KJ7 in a green colorway. And the Burgundy Gold and Blue Reebok Kamikazes, Nike Air Max 94 video review. Check out his videos if you guys haven't. Subscribe to Kicks Reason. He's a writer, obviously does a lot of um, great articles for myself, and um, he has a great YouTube channel. I mean, he has a lot of information. Very good. Uh, let's see here. So another one. This is kind of crazy ones if you want to see these Reebok Insta Pumps. These things have started been uh, started to pique my interest more and more the more I see these Insta Pumps. I definitely want to try a pair on and uh, kind of just go from there. Um, and then uh, Nike Air Flare coming out this year. Another one that looks like another big retro. And then Reebok uh, the Blast updated again. It's he says. Um, okay, so Jordan Brand unveils a Brazil pack, and you can you guys already know that the Brazil pack is going to be five hundred dollars. Was rumored to change to four hundred. Uh, it looks like it's on the re- release calendar for 500 So $500 for a pair of AJ6s in premium leather and then the less desirable uh, CP3s. How do you feel about that? I think the price point is a little bit high, regardless of how limited they are. I don't think the resale is going to be high for you guys thinking you're going to be able to cop and then resell for 1000 because who's going to pay $1,000 for an AJ6, really? Um, I don't see the resale. I mean, it seems like the packs are just charging too much. The penny posit. Or the Penny Posit and the, and the Penny One Pack Shooting Star was a prime example. Uh, $500 was a lot, even with phone posits being $250. But because of that, uh, it's just it's just kind of craziness. Um, the resale on those is like $600 or even retail. So that's good for us that actually really wanted the pack. Um, you could buy the, the pack at $500 instead of like $1,000 or something like that. You guys can see I did a review of the Hyper Penny or Little Penny Posits and the Hyper Jade. Uh, you can check out my YouTube channel on that. And I doubled up a lot of these articles because I did a lot of the reviews. Um, anyway, the Black Sheep Nike SB collaboration. Earlier, I actually was reporting that you don't get the deluxe packaging only on the deluxe version, which now never actually released. Um, so that was like the big interest to me is getting or seeing the deluxe packaging for that, and it didn't happen. So um, my interest went down. I, I like the shoes. I think they look pretty cool, but I definitely wanted to get the deluxe version 
and that is out the window, as you guys already know. This is another one that I was really excited to bring you guys, an article that I wrote regarding the Box Trolls movie, which is the same people that made the uh, Coraline movie and the Paranorman movie, which, as you guys know, Nike did collaborations uh, with both of those movies, and they released the Coraline Dunks and then the Paranorman Foam Posits. So I'm saying... This next movie is happening in September, I believe, this year. I'm assuming we're going to see another Nike um, collaboration very soon. Um, and um, and I'm curious to see what the collaboration is. With a movie named Box Trolls, it's like the perfect match for a really cool box, possibly, for a pair of sneakers within this. And I just don't I don't know what type of shoe it would be. Maybe leave a comment. Let me, let me know what type of Nike you think it would be. I think it would be really cool to have a Box Troll like Air Max. Um, or something like that. I'm not really sure what, but kind of a legacy shoe would be would be fun. Um, they went with the foam posits and the dunks before, so who knows what they're going to do this year. But I, I do imagine something because, as you guys know, I believe Phil Knight is, is affiliated and owns part of or something like that of the the company. I don't know how to say the name. Lakia or something like Lakia. Um, anyway, they're actually they, – they're, they're – um, headquarters was about five minutes from my old house so go figure i should have just knocked on the door and asked him uh but i'm definitely crossing my fingers looking forward to that so jp custom kicks uh went crazy for the g money which is one of the writers on the site as well and he did this crazy um japanese uh i don't even know how to say it yukio i don't know uh, custom, but this is wild. Like the print looks really, really dope. It was inspired off of the Paris Dunks, and as you can tell, it has a really, really cool vibe. Great custom, and really smart of uh, the G Money for using the base colors that he did, or the base model as he did, because you have the clear soles on it, which looks super sick, and just one of the best customs I've seen JP Custom Kicks do, uh, in my opinion, just from the looks of it. So shout out to both of you guys. Uh, great collaboration effort on these, and they look amazing. Um, and I believe the G Money will have a review on that, so check back uh, to his. Uh, I believe he has a link to his channel, or if he doesn't, he should, and uh, you can check it out the video. Uh, Reebok Blacktop um, Retali Retaliation is that what it is? And available now. Those actually look pretty crazy. Uh, Kicks Reason wrote a couple articles on some more Reeboks, and then um, as you guys already know, the the future um, black and white get the release date it was the 14th, and now is the 21st. Uh, it's a Fury or Insta Insta Pump Fury Soulbox collaboration updated uh, from Kicks Reason. I did a review on the LeBron 11 Everglades and I compared them to the King's Pride, which is I think is a fair comparison because of the inside collars of the King's Pride. Also, the Nike SB Paul Rodriguez 8 gets a release date uh, June 21st, so look out for that for the very first um, P Rod 8. Um, the Supreme Collection, the Anti Hero. I believe collection is how you pronounce it. it. Happened this last Friday or last Thursday. If you guys copied anything from that, Thursday would have been the day. And then let's keep going down. The KD6 Elite versus KD6 regular comparison video. Also has some other video or, or sneakers in comparison on that. And the LeBron 11 Elite uh, from the Gold Collection I review. Um, I always throw in a couple other sneakers just for comparative purposes. So I showed you guys the mangoes, I believe, in that one uh, as well. Um, so the Air Jordan 10 Chicago preview for the 2015 um, kind of the premium um, like versions of the, the Jordans. There was images of that, and I'll get into that story coming up here in just a second. Also, the LeBron 11 Low Mango Atomic Mango, which is also known as the Floridians, I believe, uh, are dropping this weekend. One of the colorways I really, really dig of the LeBron 11 Lows. I really wish they did. The KD6 Elite Lows on this model, though, with that visible zoom air, it just would have been amazing. Um, but uh, they didn't do that. You got the same old kind of tooling on the on the, the sole as you did from the LeBron 10s and the 9s, unfortunately. It looks pretty much the same. Uh, I, if I can get those uh, for a good price, I will try to get those. Uh, but, uh, but I'm not paying retail on those, unfortunately. Um, air Jordan 1 Retro High uh, Family Forever release that's happening this week as well. Uh, probably won't be as hyped up as some of the other ones, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence with it. It looks pretty cool. I like the concept, and supposedly it was a, a surprise from Jordan's family to him uh, for the design of those, which I think is cool. What the KD releases this Saturday, so good luck to those trying to cop. Hopefully you guys lucked out on some RSVPs or uh, some raffles. Same with the AJ11 Retro with the uh, 23 or Infrared 23. Um, and we get a weird Nike hybrid that's a Nike Air Max Bo Jackson quote-unquote South Beach colorway. Kind of an interesting-looking trainer, just kind of 
a weird hodgepodge of stuff, but uh, definitely has different elements from uh, some of the, the trainers um, that are popular out there. Tokyo release and the Shanghai release of the City Collection happened this morning. I'm not sure if you guys uh, were interested in that, either of those. Leave a comment. Let me know if you guys copped any, any of those. And then let's uh, jump into the last stories. I know we're running out of time here. Um, champagne Cigar uh, Pack that you guys know is dropping this weekend. And then another uh, Instapump collaboration. There's tons of those things, man. There's so many of them. Okay, so this is the major, major, let's see. Yeah, this is the, the major story for, for the – let's uh, let's end this here. So high-quality leather Jordan brand retro line beginning in 2015. Now, this was news that happened last Friday. Unfortunately, I already published my video or I already processed my video, um, so I couldn't go back and talk about this, so I'm talking about it this week. The high-quality leather on the 2015 – remastered series that Jordan brand is doing. I really think that this is something else. A lot of people are complaining about the price points. Yes, the price points will go up. Um, but you guys also need to realize that the leather quality is going to be very, very far superior to what we've seen previously. And there's the whole discussion. Well, then what have we been paying for? Like why have we been paying for lower quality Jordans and whatnot? And, and then why are they, so we've been paying like premium prices for, sub premium uh, quality products and I can understand people's frustrations with that and I feel like you know some of the great Jordans that they released in the last two years at least uh, or three years actually have been kind of butchered a little bit and like the the Air Jordan um, I guess the Fire Red 5s is a, is a prime example the quality was really really not very good on those uh, and and so like it, it's unfortunate because we're getting some other sneakers that are getting this royal treatment, but I think it's also really good that they're getting this treatment because it lets us know that at least Jordan Brand recognizes that there was a problem, and or maybe not that they recognize it was a problem, but they that they are wanting to focus um, a series of of Jordans on a uh, higher quality. Um, so again, think of it like the bin quality. If you don't know what the bin B I N um, re series was, it was about I think five sneakers that they released with super premium quality materials really limited numbers and most of the bins re resale for about 700 to you know $1300 or something like that per pair really high quality materials really nice work i definitely think that this is a step in the right direction i'm hoping that we see this on a lot of of sneakers um in general i just think that it's just an awesome thing that uh that is is happening i know a lot of people are pissed about it this red colorway looks super sick uh for the the jordan 10s look at the quality i mean it looks amazing um, the tumbled leather, it looks amazing. Like they, so tumbled leather is man-made sort of stuff, but they basically take the leather and they do a process to make it tumbled. Um, but if you use crappy leather and tumble it, it's just going to be crappy tumbled leather. Like so, like the Laney Fives is an example of a mass-produced tumbled leather that was mediocre in quality. Uh, these Sevens definitely don't have that. They they have a, a quite a nice uh, tumbled leather and then pebbled leather and whatever else you want to call these ones here. They have a lot of uh, improvement. So I think it's a good thing. I can understand people's frustration, though I'm not trying to justify the lackluster performance in the retros in the past. But I also wanted to know, like, if you had a pair of Jordans 20 years ago, let's say the Jordan 6s came out 20 years ago, right? Or 23 years ago. Then, like, how many pairs did they come out with back then? So if the quality was super A1 back in, in 23 years ago, then... Like, how many pairs did they make? Did they make 250,000 pairs back then, or did they make 20,000 pairs? Because if they only make 20,000 pairs, they can focus on higher quality materials and higher crafted uh, product. Nowadays, it's in such high demand that they're literally literally selling the name brand for whatever it is as the elite status symbol of whatever. It's not for performance. It's for status symbol. For the most part, they can really take those sneakers and sell them for a premium and um, and not have the premium materials with it, but you're also selling 250,000, depending on the sneaker release, um, 250,000 pairs. That's a lot of manufacturing, and I still compare it to a McDonald's hamburger. You won't have the same, um, you won't have the same like wow factor from a McDonald's ha hamburger as you do from a mom and pop's place that gets their uh, beef locally or, or whatever it might be, <clears throat> and all the ingredients fresh, and every bur burger that they make might be different. A McDonald's, you go, you get a Big Mac. It's the same Big Mac everywhere you go. A every city across the United States or wherever will have that same exact Big Mac, and it will taste the same. Same thing as a Jordan Retro. It will be exactly the same. 
Um, and I think that that's what they wanted to do because they wanted the leather the leather to be smooth or or um, I, I guess pebbled or whatever it might be. But they wanted it to be the same without like the look of defects. And if you look if you have real leather, there's going to be defects on it. I personally think that it's okay to have those type of defects as long as the leather is of higher quality. So that's just kind of my my thought process. Again, I don't think it justifies having the the, the lackluster type of product, but at the same time. They're mass producing it, so like they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. If they don't mass produce it and they only make, let's say, a hundred thousand instead of two hundred fifty thousand, a hundred thousand's a lot, but it's not enough to fulfill the need of or the desire to have that product in in a, a really really high demand retro. So people are going to be pissed if they only make a hundred thousand of them, even if they were. You can make a hundred thousand in really high quality, or you can make two hundred fifty thousand in mediocre quality. Uh, I mean. Either way, people are going to be kind of uh, kind of pissed. They only make a hundred thousand. They're they're too limited. People are going to be mad. They make too many of them, but the quality is not as good. People are going to be mad. You know what I mean? So that that's just kind of my two cents on that. Anyway, uh, in closing, I wanted to show you guys. I am working on to update the release calendar. So as we are are moving forward, this will be changing. But you will see that I'm going to start up update, updating the uh, releases here now. So uh, I realize I got some some fixes in place. So now you can see. The actual images before, like the South Beach here, it was the end of the era and I couldn't. But now I can, so um, check back and see the releases on the release calendar um, as uh, we be updating them every week. And the link is right up here in the middle of the page. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend. Congrats to all the grads that are graduating this week or next or the week after or whenever that's actually happening. And either high school or college, congrats to you guys. And hopefully you guys start off the summer right. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.